In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Carla G asks us, how do pregnancy tests work? But just before we get started with this video, I do want to say that it's brought to you by me, or rather another channel that I do called Business Blaze. It's all about business, but it's actually interesting. It looks at the most epic failures and times things went wrong, but also little known successes. Generally, it's just the weirdest stuff that I could find from the business world, like why the 50 pound note in the UK is for criminals and stuff like that. It's a bit more laid back than this channel, throwing a good amount of silliness and fun at you along with some facts. Check it out through the link below and let's get on with the video. So in most cultures throughout history, there just wasn't a reliable way for a woman in her first trimester to definitively know whether or not she was pregnant with one of the leading tests through the ages using uroscopy, studying the color, consistency, and taste. <laughs> awesome, of a woman's urine, with the practitioners colloquially called piss profits. Another interesting urine-based method was dipping a ribbon in the urine and then burning it to study the smoke and flames coloration. I'm gonna guess that that wasn't exactly effective. As to how accurate these methods were, it isn't really clear, as obviously the piss profits likely varied in accuracy from profit to profit. However, presumably, if they were completely inaccurate, people would have stopped using them. And as the urine of a pregnant woman does change a bit from her non-knocked-up brethren, it's possible a master piss sommelier might have been able to tell the difference with enough experience, tasting, and otherwise playing with a woman's pee. Okie dokie then. All of that said, there is one ancient pee test that does appear to have actually worked, this one dating all the way back to at least 1350 BC in ancient Egypt, involving having the woman repeatedly urinate on a sack of wheat and barley seeds over the course of a week. After this, they would check to see if the seeds had sprouted. We can only imagine how they came up with doing this. If the seeds did sprout, the woman was determined to be pregnant. If not, well, probably not. Now, this might seem bizarre. It certainly does. And a little ridiculous. That too. It said that the test was found to be 70% accurate under laboratory conditions in a study conducted in 1963. It was theorized by the researchers that the presence of high levels of estrogen in the urine of pregnant women is the trigger here. Whatever the case, we have to fast forward to the early 20th century before something much more accurate was discovered, though it sounds just as silly as the Egyptian method. In this case, the researchers used rabbits and frogs, and shockingly, up until almost the 1980s, this was the de facto way to test whether a woman was pregnant or not. Okay, so what on earth were they doing with a bunch of rabbits and frogs? Well, it turns out that if you take the urine of a pregnant woman and inject it into a juvenile female rabbit, the rabbit will go into heat. Again, how did they discover this? Juvenile female rabbits were necessary here, as it would induce premature heat rather than potentially being a result of the natural kind. The doctor would be able to determine all of this by checking the rabbit's ovaries for certain signs, such as being enlarged with visible red dots on the surface. This was a process that, for the early days of the procedure, unfortunately meant that the rabbit had to be killed, leading to a popular misnomer and expression that a woman would only be pregnant if the rabbit died. But in reality, well, the rabbit always died. That said, in time, the test and science advanced enough for the doctor to be able to check whether the rabbit had an estrous reaction without killing it, much to the relief of cute little furry bunnies everywhere. Although, you know, they still were having urine injected into them. Another significant improvement was the realization that the experiment could be performed on a frog, specifically an African clawed frog with similar accuracy. Although it definitely wasn't an improvement for the frogs. Now they're the ones getting injected with urine. This circumvented animal murder entirely since all the doctor had to do in this case was wait to see if the juvenile frog laid eggs within 24 hours of being injected with the urine. So, how did this sorcery work and how did they actually figure all of this stuff out? As to the first question, the answer lies in a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin, commonly abbreviated to HCG. HCG is produced in the placenta and is normally only present in the urine of a woman who is pregnant, and it's also sometimes present in men. We've got more on this rather fascinating latter fact, and whether this means men can test positive on a home pregnancy test or not, in the bonus facts in just a bit, so stay tuned. Going back to the more normal way 
HCG factors in. When a fertilized egg implants, the placenta begins to develop, with specialized cells within the placenta secreting HCG, specifically trophoblast cells. This process usually begins about six days after implantation of the egg. This is why the woman needs to wait about six days after acquiring this particular parasite before she will have a chance of testing positive. Noteworthy here, on the accuracy of these tests, is that once a woman's placenta begins to secrete HCG, it doubles the amount it produces about every 48 hours. It continues to do this until its peak around the 11th and 12th week of gestation. After this, it begins to decline and then secretes low levels throughout the rest of your pregnancy. This is why most tests and doctors tell you to take the test after your first missed period. If you follow this advice, they are between 97 and 99% accurate. But Back to the rabbit test. This was invented in the late 1920s by Selmar Aschheim and Bernard Zondek, a German gynecologist and endocrinologist, respectively. Zondek, an expert in hormone research, discovered and isolated the HCG hormone while working alongside Aschheim, studying the urine of pregnant women in 1927. Noting that the hormone was seemingly only found in the urine of pregnant women, the pair correctly theorized that it was intimately linked with being pregnant, though they were never able to pinpoint where exactly it was produced incorrectly proposing that it was produced by the anterior pituitary glands rather than the placenta. After isolating the hormone, the men began experimenting with it to see what effect, if any, it would have on mice and rats. To their amazement, they discovered that it caused female rodents to begin ovulating, even if they hadn't yet reached sexual maturity. By 1928, Aschheim and Zondek had perfected their pregnancy test using rabbits, dubbing it the A to Z test as a nod to both their names and, for the first time in all of human history, women who suspect they might be pregnant had a scientifically proven way and a relatively quick way to find out for sure. At around the same time the A to Z tests were making their debut, a British zoologist residing in Cape Town, South Africa, Lancelot Hogburn, independently discovered that the African clawed frog would begin ovulating and producing eggs when its dorsal lymph sac was injected with certain hormones from sheep. Hogburn repeated the test with urine from a pregnant woman and noted that the frogs would similarly ovulate and lay eggs shortly after being injected, making them a reliable indicator for pregnancy. It was later discovered injecting adolescent male frogs also worked, except in this case, case, it simply spurred sperm production. The actual methodology of the test was later refined by South African researchers called Hilal Abe Shapiro and Harry Zwarenstein, with the result being a pregnancy test that was every bit as accurate as the A to Z test. Though Hogman's discovery was made at around the same time as Aschheim and Zondek's in the late 1920s, and was both more humane and faster, giving reliable results in less than a day instead of around 72 hours like the A to Z test, the Hogman test didn't start to become popular until the mid-1930s, though it eventually became the gold standard for detecting pregnancy. While other methods were developed in the ensuing decades, the Hogburn test remains one of the most accurate and popular ways to detect pregnancy right up until the early 1970s. To quote a letter from an anonymous individual written to Shapiro and Zwarenstein, Thank you for your report on the pregnancy test on Mrs. X. You may be interested to know that of one GP of many years standing, one specialist gynecologist and one frog, only the frog was correct. We like to imagine that after correctly overruling her credentialed colleagues, they gave the frog a tiny doctor's coat. But the reality was that she probably just had a lifetime of testing ahead of her. So how did we go from injecting animals with pee to simply peeing on a stick? And well, how do these more modern tests work? Because, you know, we're only like 10 minutes into the video, so we should probably answer the question before you smash that dislike button. The brainchild of Judith Vartakaitis and Glenn Braustein, the first home pregnancy tests hit the shelves in 1978, marketed by EPD for $10, which is about $37 today. These were a bit more complicated than the pee on a stick versions we have today, consisting of a vial of purified water Water, a test tube with red blood cells from a sheep, a medicine dropper, a clear plastic support for the test tube, an angled mirror at the bottom, and some duct tape. Okay, we totally made up the duct tape part, but it does seem to fit right in there with all of that other junk. Although it took two hours to get the results, this rather complicated home test was still 97% accurate for positive results and 80% accurate for negative results. Beyond saving a frog from getting jabbed with a needle and injected with urine, the advantages stated were privacy and not having to
to wait several more weeks for the doctor's confirmation, which gives you a chance, if pregnant, to start taking care of yourself or to consider the possibility of an early abortion. Much like the animal tests, though, the early tests and the more advanced ones we have today rely on the aforementioned HCG. So, how does this work? Modern pregnancy tests use an antibody known as immuno immunoassay. Immunoassay. Ooh. Modern pregnancy tests use an antibody known as immunoassay to detect the presence of HCG. The makers of the test then synthesize another antibody and label it with a dye or an agent that produces light as a result of a chemical reaction. They combine these two antibodies based on the sandwich principle. When the antibody that binds to the HCG attaches to the hormone, the second antibody also attaches and releases its hold on whatever molecule allows for visual recognition. The result is a visual marker that you can see, voila, that is science. If the antibody doesn't attach, the second antibody will not release the visual marker and nothing is seen, or other mechanisms are put in place to give the sign for the negative result. In the case of a literal plus or minus sign test, for example, they may put in place a mechanism for always showing the horizontal line after exposure to any urine, and the vertical line then only appearing with the presence of HCG, as previously described. Incidentally, HCG has many other uses than testing for pregnancy. Beyond one we're going to get to in the bonus fact, since HCG has been known to cause ovulation not just in animals but humans, some doctors use this method of hormone therapy prior to attempting in vitro fertilization. Beyond this, because it can help produce testosterone, bodybuilders who take steroids have been known to take HCG as a supplement. This also helps prevent some of certain steroids' long-term side effects like shrinking testicles. You will also often have read that HCG therapy will help with weight loss, but numerous studies have shown that this notion is absolutely false. And now, let's do that bonus fact. Going back to where the men can test positive for pregnancy via an over-the-counter pregnancy test, it turns out, absolutely yes. Of course, if this happens, said man should get himself to a doctor stat as ectopic pregnancies are no joke and they'll want a doctor to monitor things closely and find out how the fertilized egg got in his body. And yes, we are totally joking here, but it's also totally possible to cause a man to become pregnant via injecting him in certain parts of his anatomy with fertilized eggs. Incidentally, it's also fully possible for a man to lactate, and it's not even that hard to make happen, with some men even being able to induce it simply by having a baby suckle them regularly, similar to what even women who've never been pregnant can manage. Further, the milk produced by men seems to be of the same quality as a typical woman's. More on this in our video, Can Men Breastfeed a Baby?, which is linked to below. Okay, so going back to men testing positive on pregnancy tests, it turns out that HCG can be released by several types of cancer tumors in both men and women, such as cancers involving the ovaries, stomach, lungs, and testes. Cancers involving the liver, mutation epithelial cells and those involving the endocrine, hormonal system, and nervous system are also associated with HCG release. Finally, this hormone is typically found in extremely high levels in patients suffering kidney failure. Of course, a negative pregnancy test doesn't mean one is cancer-free, even when just talking testicular cancer. There are several types of testicular cancers and not all produce elevated levels of HCG. Lumped into two categories, they're known as seminomas and non-seminomas. These types of cancers also also produce other markers that aren't picked up by pregnancy tests, such as alpha theta protein and lactate dehydrogenase. The only type that always gives off HCG is in fact known as choriocarcinoma. In fact, only 20 to 40 percent of seminomas and 40 to 50 percent of non-seminomas give off elevated levels of HCG. But either way, if you are a dude and you test positive on a home pregnancy test, you are most likely growing a different type of problem in your body than the one women who test positive are. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below. Don't forget to check out that channel I mentioned, Business Blaze. It's linked to below. And thank you for watching.